Hi everyone, I am Dr. C. S. Kulkarni, MD, and I am going to teach medical biochemistry. Before starting the topic, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. In the last session, we studied about structures of protein. In today's session, we will study structural and functional relationship. The function of proteins are maintained because of their ability to recognize and interact with a variety of molecules. The three-dimensional structural conformation provides and maintains the functional characteristics. The three-dimensional structure is in turn is dependent on the primary structure. In this diagram, we can see that by knowing the structure of hemoglobin, we can come to know its function of carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide. So any difference in the primary structure may produce a, a protein which cannot serve its function. To illustrate the structure and function relationship, the following three proteins are considered. Each belongs to a different class of functional classification. In this diagram, we can see HPS is converted to HPA by changing amino acids and resulting in altered function. Enzymes The first step in enzymatic classes is the binding of enzyme to the substrate. This is in turn depends on structural conformation of the active site of the enzyme, which is precisely oriented for substrates binding. In this diagram, we can see that substrate binding is accurate to the enzyme so that it can break into two molecules. Carbonic anhydrase characterizes the reversible reaction hydration of carbon dioxide. This enzyme makes it possible for the precise positioning of the carbon dioxide molecules and hydroxyl ion for the formation of bicarbonate. In this diagram, we can see the reaction brought about by carbonic anhydrase in which HCO3- and H plus are formed. <coughs> The zinc iron is located at a deep cleft coordinated to histidine residues. The CO2 binding residues are very near to the zinc iron. Water binds to zinc iron, gets ionized to hydroxyl iron and binds to the carbon dioxide which is proximally located. The subs substrates are brought in close proximity for the reaction to proceed. Transport proteins. Hemoglobin, the transporter of oxygen, is a tetrameric protein which contains alpha 2 and beta 2 chains, which each, with each monomer having a heme unit. Binding of oxygen to one heme facilitates oxygen binding to other subunits. Binding of H plus and CO2 promotes release of CO2 or O2 from hemoglobin. In this diagram, we can see how the hemoglobin works. This allosteric interaction is physiologically important and is termed as Bohr effect. Even a single amino acid substitution alters the structure and thereby function. For example, in sickle cell anemia, <coughs> the six amino acid is the beta chain is altered, leading to profound clinical manifestations. The collagen is most abundant in animals, mammals, and is and is the main fibrous component of skin, bones, 
tendon, cartilage, and teeth. Collagen forms a superhelical cable where the three polypeptides are bound itself around itself. In collagen, every third glycine residue is a glycine. The only amino acid that can fit in the triple stranded helix is glycine. In this diagram, we can see the purple strand standard helix of collagen. The triple helix of collagen is stabilized by the steric repulsion of the rings of hydroxyprotene and also by the hydrogen bonds between them. Vitamin C deficiency, failure of hydroxidation of proline or ricine leads to reduced oxygen binding and consequent weakness of collagen. The quarterostagger triple helical structure of collagen is responsible for its tensile strength. Structure of protein The first four protein to be sequenced was insulin by Sanger in 1955. He was awarded Nobel Prize later in 1958. Before studying the structure, first a pure sample of protein has to be available. The proteins are extracted and purified by various chromatographic techniques like ion exchange, adsorption, partition, size exclusion, affinity and HPLC that is high performance liquid chromatography. The purity of protein thus is isolated in studied by electrophoresis. PAGE like polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis and isoelectric focusing. Further, molecular weight is determined by mass spectroscopy by or by MALDI, which means matrix assisted laser desorption ionization time of flight mass spectrometry. In this diagram, we can see that protein is selected for purification of electrophoresis. Now, first, the steps for determining the primary structure. Determination of the number of polypeptide chains in a protein, this is ascertained by treating with the diacetyl chloride which combines with the N-terminal amino acids. The tagged polypeptide chains are subjected to complete hydrolysis by boiling with 6 normal HCl with 110 degrees centigrade for 18 to 36 hours under anaerobic conditions to give a mixture of amino acids. In this diagram, we can see that N terminal binds to D, F, and B. <coughs> the number and nature of the dancing chloride, dancing amino acids, are, can be determined and will indicate the number of polypeptide chains in the protein. For example, there are if there are two poly, different polypeptide chains in a protein, two different rancyl chloride amino acids can be identified. Determination of the amino acid composition by complete hydrolysis of the polypeptide chains and chromatographic separation and quantitation, and then identification of N-terminal and C-terminal amino acids. In this diagram, we can see thin layer chromatography and color chromatography. Site-specific hydrolysis of polypeptide chain using specific enzymes to get a mixture of overlapping peptides. Separation of 
separation and purification of each of these peptides and then analyzing the amino acid sequence of each of the small peptides and then deciphering the sequence of the whole protein. In this diagram we can see centrifugation as a method of purification and group analysis. This is the second step. The end termino, terminal amino acid hang, has already been identified in the treatment with tensile chloride. Originally, Sanger used chlorodinitrobenzene FDNB or Sanger's reagent for identification of end terminal amino acid. The C terminal amino acid, which may be identified by carboxypeptide. A and B. These enzymes specific, specifically hydrolyze and release the C terminal amino acid from the polypeptide chain. Continued action of enzyme would release the amino acids sequentially from the C terminal end. The car carboxypeptidase A will not act if the C terminal residue is azurin, protein, or lysine. Carboxypeptidase B will act only if the penultimate residue is protein. Then the third part of the protein analysis is sequencing. Purified individual protein chains are sequenced using Edelman's degradation technique. Edelman's reagent is phenyl isothiocyanate. It is formed by covalent bond at the to the N-terminal amino acid of any peptide chain. This can be identified. The number four part of the protein analysis is partial hydrolysis. For very long chain proteins, the chain is broken into many small peptides of overlapping sequences. This is done by subjecting the polypeptide chain to the hydrolysis by two or more different site-specific enzymes. Each of these small peptides can be identified, purified and subjected to advance degradation and sequence. The trypsin hydrolyzes the peptide bonds formed by alpha carboxyl group of glycine and arginine. Chymotrypsin preferentially acts on peptide bonds formed by carboxyl group of amino acids phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan or leucine. Cyanogen bromide CNBR attacks the C side of methionine residue and, and, and breaks the peptide bond. Each peptide is then analyzed and the whole sequence of the polypeptide is determined by as if fitting in the parts of a jigsaw puzzle. The protein, the position of different disulfide bonds can be determined by cleaving the native protein sample to get fragments with intact SS bonds. These fragments can then be identified. Fingerprinting method or ingram secret. This method was developed by Vernon Ingram or in 1956. It helps the it helps to identify easily any qualitative abnormalities in protein structure. Here the protein is digested into many small peptides by trypsin. The mixtures of Peptides are separated by chromatography, that is pep peptide mapping. The position of 
the peptide contains the altered amino acid is found to be different when compared with the peptide map of the normal peptide example beta chain of hemoglobin a and hemoglobin s in this diagram we can see that protein is purified by fingerprinting method automated sequencing using the edmonds degradation technique sequencing can be completed within a few hours by automatic sequencers study of higher levels of protein structure the higher levels of protein structure may be studied by techniques using x-ray diffraction ultraviolet light spectroscopy optical rotatory dispersion circular dichroism nuclear magnetic resonance etc nmr spectroscopy measures the absorption of radio frequency of atomic nuclei in this diagram we can see that x-ray diffraction through a crystal eu is used in protein analysis here we can see that uv light spectrometry helps to determine the protein structure here we can see that optical rotatory dispersion helps in determining protein structure here we can see that circular dichroism is useful in determining protein structure here we can see that nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy is used to determine the protein structure by studying the frequency at a particular nucleus absorbs energy we could get an idea of the functional group available in the molecule the two dimensional nmr permits a three dimensional representation of the protein in solution it also helps the study to study the alterations in con on conformation of a protein during binding with another ligand a beam of x-ray is refracted by the electrons around each atom and the intensity of refracted beam is detected by protein photographic plate or corrected in by an electronic device this x-ray diffraction study is possible on crystallized proteins nowadays dna sequencing is used to determine the amino acid sequence in this method at first a a rough sequencing of protein is done by edmonds method based on small uh, based on knowledge small length oligonucleotide primers are made these are also used to amplify the appropriate genes by polymerase chain reaction pcr and correct dna clone is obtained in this diagram we can see edmonds degradation the sequence of that part of dna is done using the knowledge of the genetic code the sequence of the encoded protein is identified here ends our session kindly like share and subscribe the channel thank you